During the early stages of the war, the Germans modified small quantities of Panzer I Alfse tanks as ammunition carriers. These lacked any kind of defensive weapons to protect themselves from either ground or air targets. For this reason, from March to May 1941, some 24 Panzer I Alfse A would be modified as self-propelled anti-aircraft vehicles. Sadly, these vehicles are very poorly documented in the sources and there is quite little information on them. I'm your host Blue Moon and if you like our work, please consider subscribing on our Patreon or donating on PayPal. All the funds gathered there are used to pay for the amazing illustrations you see on our website and in our videos. Every amount, no matter how small, can be a big help. During September of 1939, the Germans converted some 51 older Panzer I Alfse tanks into ammunition carriers. This conversion was quite rudimentary, done by simply removing the turrets and replacing the opening with two-part hatches. These vehicles would be allocated to the Munitions Transport Abteilung 610, Ammunition Transport Battalion, and its two companies, the 601st and the 603rd. The 610th Battalion would see service during the German invasion of the West in 1940. There, it was noted that these vehicles lacked proper armed support vehicles that could protect them from any potential enemy threats, especially against airborne attack. To resolve this issue, IN-6, Armoured Troop Inspector issued a request for an anti-aircraft vehicle based on the Panzer I Alfs A chassis to be designed. Receiving this request, Varproof 6 appointed Alket and Daimler-Benz were designing the first prototype. Spanish author L. M. Franco provides additional information, claiming that according to the soldiers who operated these vehicles, the manufacturer of the first prototype was actually Sturver. The Sturver company was located in Stettin and was actually a car manufacturer. Another author, J. Ledvok, supports this information, but notes that the Sturver company lacked adequate production facilities and was probably responsible for providing some necessary parts, rather than fully assembling the vehicles. Author D. Nershich, on the other hand, states that only Alket was responsible for the design and production of this vehicle. While it is not clear who produced the first prototype, the 610th Battalion was tasked with acquiring the necessary equipment and manpower to build 24 vehicles. It is not clear if, for the construction of these 24 vehicles, new Panzer I hulls or already existing ammunition supply vehicles based on it were used. At this time, the Panzer I was slowly being phased out of service, so it is possible that the regular tank versions and not the ammunition supply vehicles were used for this modification. The first vehicle was finished in March and the last one in May of 1941. Based on a few sources, this vehicle was designated the 2cm Flak 38 Sebstfallefetter Panzerkampfwagen 1 Alfs A. It is generally referred to, more simply, as Flak Panzer 1. The Flak Panzer 1 used an almost unchanged Panzer 1 Alfs A chassis and hull. It consisted of the front driving compartment, central crew compartment, and rear engine compartment. The design of the rear engine compartment was left almost unchanged. The main engine was the Krupp M305 four-cylinder, giving out 60 horsepower at 500 RPM. The only source to mention the Flak Panzer I's driving performance is D. Nershich. According to him, the weight was increased to 6.3 tonnes from the original 5.4 tonnes. The increase in weight led to a reduction of the maximum speed from 37.5 to 35 kilometres per hour. This source also notes that the operational range was 145 kilometers. This is probably wrong, as the regular Panzer I Alfse's operational range was 140 kilometers. Unless there was an increase of the original 140 litre fuel load that is not mentioned in the sources, this seems unlikely. The extra added weight could also have led to engine overheating problems. To prevent this, two larger 50 to 70 mm wide holes were cut open in the engine compartment in order to provide better ventilation. Some vehicles had several smaller 10 mm holes cut for the same purpose. Another change was the removal of the vent usually located on the right side of the hull. Its purpose was to provide heated air to the crew compartment. The Flak Panzer I used an unmodified Panzer I Alfse suspension. It consisted of five road wheels on each side. The last road wheel, which was larger than the others, acted as an idler. The first wheel used a coil spring mount with an elastic shock absorber in order to prevent any outward bending. The remaining four wheels, including the last larger wheel, were mounted in pairs on a suspension cradle with leaf spring units. There was one front drive sprocket and three return rollers per side. The structure of the original Panzer I was heavily modified. 
First, the turret and superstructure top and parts of the side and rear armour were removed. On top of the frontal superstructure armour, an 18cm high armoured plate was welded. In addition, two smaller triangular shaped plates were added to the front side armour. This added armour served to protect the opening between the lower part of the gun shield and the superstructure. The drivers and the two side visors were left unchanged. On top of the vehicle, a new square shaped platform for the main gun was installed. Unlike the original Panzer I turret which was placed asymmetrically, the new gun was placed at the centre of the vehicle. The Panzer I was a small vehicle and to provide proper working space for the crew, the Germans added two additional foldable platforms. These were placed on the sides of the vehicle and some vehicles had one more to the rear, just behind the engine. The platforms actually consisted of two rectangular shaped plates. The first plate was welded to the superstructure, while the second plate could be folded down to provide additional working space. As even these were insufficient, the crew had to move around the engine compartment. The Panzer I had muffler covers placed on either side of the engine, so the crew had to be careful to avoid accidentally burning themselves on them. The main armament of the Flak Panzer I was the 2cm Flak 38 anti-aircraft cannon. This was a weapon intended to replace the older 2cm Flak 30, which it never actually did. It was designed by Mauserwerker, incorporating many elements of the Flak 30 with some internal changes, like the addition of a new bolt mechanism and return spring. In order to provide the crew with some level of protection, the armoured shield was retained. The gun had a full traverse of 360 degrees and an elevation of minus 20 degrees to plus 90 degrees. The maximum effective range was 2 kilometers against air targets and 1.6 kilometers against ground targets. The maximum rate of fire was between 420 and 480 rounds per minute, but the practical rate of fire was usually between 180 to 220 rounds per minute. Interestingly, author D. Nershich mentions that the first Flak Panzer I prototype was armed with the Italian 2cm Breda model 1935 cannon. Why this particular weapon was used is sadly not mentioned by this source. There is a possibility that the author simply confused it with the Spanish nationalist conversion of the Panzer I, which was armed with the same weapon. The 2cm Flak 38 was unchanged and could be, if needed, easily removed from the vehicle. The overall performance and its characteristics were also unchanged on the Flak Panzer I. The time to deploy from the march to a combat position ranged between 4 to 6 minutes. The ammunition for the main gun was carried inside the hull, just beside the driver and the radio operator. The ammunition load consisted of 250 rounds. This number is unusual, as a normal 2cm Flak 38 clip contained 20 rounds. Additional spare ammunition was carried in either the Sonderanhänger Ein Axe 51 trailers, not all vehicles had them, or in support vehicles. No secondary armament was carried, but the crews would probably have been armed with pistols or submachine guns for self-defence. The Flak Panzer I's armour was quite thin. The Panzer I's front hull armour ranged between 8 to 13 mm. The side armour was 13 to 14.5 mm thick, the bottom 5 mm and the rear 13 mm. The gun operators were only protected by the 2cm Flak 38's gun shield, with the sides, rear and top being completely exposed to enemy fire. For such a small vehicle, the Flak Panzer I had a large crew of 8. Five of these would be stationed in the vehicle itself. They consisted of the commander, gunner, loader, driver and the radio operator. The driver's position was unchanged from the original Panzer I, and he was seated on the vehicle's left side. To his right, the radio operator, with the Funkgerät 2 radio equipment, was positioned. In order to enter their positions, they had to squeeze themselves between the frontal armour and the gun platform. These two were the only fully protected crew members. The remaining three crew members were stationed around the gun platform. Three additional crew members were positioned in the auxiliary supply vehicles, and were probably responsible for providing additional ammunition or acting as target spotters. Due to the Flak Panzer I's small size, they were provided with ammunition trailers for carrying additional spare ammunition and other equipment. The Germans decided that this was not enough, and an additional 24 Panzer I Alpha A chassis was supplied to the 610th Battalion to be modified as Munizon Schlepper Ammunition Transports, also known as Lauber Bowers. The Panzer I's were extensively modified by removing the superstructure and turret and replacing them with simple flat and vertical armour plates. The front plate had a large windshield for the driver to see where he was driving. The 24 Flak Panzer I's were used to form the Flak Abteilung 614 the anti-aircraft battalion 614, in early May 1941. These anti-aircraft battalions, with some 20 in total, were formed by the German army to 
to avoid being dependent on the Luftwaffe's own anti-aircraft units. The 614th Battalion was divided into three companies, each equipped with eight vehicles. According to some sources, the 614th Battalion was also supplemented with the 2cm Flak Veerling 38 armed SDKFZ 7-1 half tracks, which were attached to each company. This unit was moved to the east for the upcoming invasion of the Soviet Union. The 614th Battalion was initially not involved in the offensive as it was stationed in Pomerania undergoing extensive crew training. After August, the 614th Battalion was transported by rail to the Romanian city of Yash, from where it was to be redirected towards the Eastern Front. Sadly, there is no information about its service life in the Soviet Union. The extra weight, combined with the harsh climate and poor road conditions, would have been quite stressful for the fragile Panzer I suspension and engine. Surprisingly, despite their weak armour and inferior chassis, the last vehicle was lost during the battle for Stalingrad in early 1943. This was probably because the Flat Panzer I was intended to provide cover for the ammunition supply units, which were often located behind the front lines. While not related to the previously mentioned vehicles, there were at least two other Panzer I field modifications adapted to the anti-aircraft role. According to Dean Nersheach, beside the Flat Panzer I armed with the 2cm Flak 38, a few were built with the triple 1.5 or 2cm MG151 drilling. These, the precise numbers are unknown, it could have been only a single vehicle, were built by placing a new weapon mount inside the crew compartment. The existing photo shows it was built using a Panzer I Alfs B chassis. Due to a lack of information, it is difficult to see how this vehicle was actually designed from the inside. The working space inside this modification would have been quite cramped. Whether the cannons could be fully rotated is also unknown. As the MG-151 drilling was employed in greater numbers at the war's end, it is likely that this was a last-ditch effort to increase the Panzer I's firepower by any means when there was nothing else available. There is another photograph of a Panzer I equipped with a 3.7cm flak mount placed on top of the superstructure. Interestingly, in this photograph the gun barrel is missing. The photograph gives the impression that it is at a repair storage facility, so maybe the gun barrel was removed for cleaning or yet to be replaced. The Flak Panzer I, while not a purposely designed vehicle, was surely an innovative way of providing better mobility for anti-aircraft weapons. While using the Panzer I chassis had benefits, like being cheap and quick to build, with plenty of available spare parts, etc., it had a number of drawbacks, like insufficient protection, lack of working space, weak suspension, etc. When this vehicle was introduced in limited numbers for service, the Germans actually did not consider a self-propelled anti-aircraft vehicle based on a tank chassis a priority simply because the Luftwaffe was still a fearsome force. In the later years, with the increase of Allied dominance in the skies, the Germans would put much more effort into developing a dedicated anti-aircraft vehicle based on a tank chassis. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit, and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also, likes, comments, and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.